That's better. Before we get into this video, make sure you are subscribed and let's keep it fuerte. Crack up. Polly here back on the Latino slant with my buddy Subscribe and Scribe Light. <laughs> subscribe. You ever get <laughs> subscribe Light. That's fine. That's fine. Subscribe Light. <laughs> subscribe Light. How you doing, bud? Doing all right. Good morning to everybody. Or I should say, ¿Cómo estás? The, they came at night. Uh, yes. That's the new television show. And it documents a kind of a, tr a true story, but we don't know. Uh, they took some they took some liberties. We'll talk about that in a minute of the Spanish production at night that came in 1931 that filmed the movie Dracula on the same sets and everything as Bela Lugosi's Dracula that shot during the day. Let's get your takes. Well, I thought it was very well done. I mean, as a period piece, the costuming, the sets, um, everything looked appropriate. This looked like a very big budget, uh, well-produced uh, piece of television. Uh, I appreciated the fact that you had a combination of languages since it was an American movie company making a Spanish version of a British book based on Slavic folklore. It's all very complicated. Um, the characters are really enjoyable. Uh, I mean, I, I want to, I want to watch more of this just out of curiosity. Um, Jason Alexander appearing in a, in a bit part as the movie producer was a little bit of a surprise, but, uh, you know, Hey, very Jewish, uh, Carl Lemley. He played. Yes. The, uh, very Jewish. Who, yes. Who created the monster verse for universe for universal. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, overall, I, I, I found it very engaging. Uh, characters are really enjoyable to watch and, uh, it had at least that first episode can't say about the rest, but that first episode had really the right balance of humor, uh, but a little bit of drama and enough characterization that I remembered one character to the next and they made themselves very distinct and I enjoyed watching them. So I'm, I'm curious about the rest of the, um, um, the series, my, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Maria, my friend in, in Mexico, she, uh, um, we, we always, whenever, whenever we're watching a show, when someone starts speaking Spanish, I always ask her, uh, if they're speaking Espanol or La Espanol and La Espanol is LA Espanol versus someone who's mm -hmm. like native Mexican or elsewise. And, uh, she remarked that everybody here is speaking native, except that the grandmother is Colombian. The granddaughter is Mexican. Dracula seems like he's from Spain himself or something or Mexican because she can mm -hmm. spot all these accents and things. And so she says, and she said, this is like watching a telenovela because everybody's from a different place, but they're all supposed to be from one place. I'm like, okay. So, so that's, that's great that you said that because um, one, the actors were Latin American, meaning they were from different parts of, of uh, Latin America. Sure. So Carlos is a span the Eugenio de Derbez character uh, is a Spanish thespian. And they really embellished that he was a ladies man and he was so full of himself that he kept taking encores at the theater uh, that he was the lead in. Yes. Uh, very cringy, very cringy. Yeah, they were like, really? Um, and then the uh, other actors were either, you know, uh, Argent half Argentinian, uh, mm -hmm. Cuban. And yeah, she's talking about the Latin era because we can pick up on that. Mm -hmm. But in regards to the story, those characters, the real people were actually from different parts of Latin America. And sure. the, the, uh, the breakout star, Lupita Tovar, who plays, uh, you know, Eve, uh, um, the, the Harker, uh, the female Harker, right? Uh, uh, she was from Mexico. She, I think mm -hmm. she was fantastic. I mean, oh, yeah. everyone was fantastic. Um, so, yeah, she's right on point with the, with the Latin ear. And then there's a a really funny nod or poke at <clears throat> uh, Cubans, and that there is a woman cast there that no one can understand because she's right so because fast. was she Very Puerto good. Rican or something? Was she supposed to be Puerto Rican or Cuban? She's cute. I think she's Cuban, and <clears throat> she's you know yeah, that's and, right. And she uh, later on in the show, she puts a curse on the production because you know they they oh, you know, they kind of like get rid of her i remember that it's yeah I, I i asked i asked maria when they started talking about uh the the translator or the movie producer uh at, at one point she whispered to him i can't understand a word she's saying or whatever yeah and so so then so then the actress playing the mm -hmm. cuban actress she started like just going off 
into La La Land about something. And so uh, Marie and I listened to that twice and I asked her, do you understand what she's saying? Is like, uh, no, it's gibberish. <laughs> right, right. It's like and mostly absurd. gibberish. It's like, uh, it doesn't right. make any sense. It doesn't make but any sense. So that's very much, because this is, this is very much a uh, Mexican and Hollywood production. Like that's their, their kind of, kind of fun jab mm -hmm. at, uh, at the kind of like that Cuban Caribbean, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, stereotype. dialect basically. Yeah. What's well, the stereotype too? Because <clears throat> she's, you know, she's, she's praying to Chango, you know, all the, uh, you know, a, a, you know, an African deity to, to do the curse. I mean, that stuff is hilarious, man. Yeah. Uh, she makes a good contrast to, uh, uh, Lupita who's, she, she carries across the very sort of, virginal, innocent, uh, forthright actress versus the I'm going to take advantage of my bodily assets, Cuban lady. And then there's the, the Carmen character who's another actress in the film, but she's like, who do I got to sleep with to get more lines? Right. <laughs> a cast of characters that, you know, are filming a movie. A great premise for for comedy. And I think for the most part, um, they knocked it out. Look, we sat and watched the four episodes because they, mm -hmm. by the, you know, by the time that we started watching this, they had already dropped four episodes. We wanted more and we watched the whole thing and, uh, really good, really good. Yeah. You know, it's entertaining. They, mm -hmm. Yeah. They did a really good job of establishing the world that these characters are moving in and establishing the stakes for the producer and, uh, didn't didn't spend i mean i i appreciated the fact that it was the the first and i've only seen the first episode that it was a very uh mm -hmm. tightly written script i didn't feel like any time was wasted uh mm -hmm. one of the things that i have the most complaints about of streaming series these days is filler or uh you know just blank time where nothing's getting done and right. as far as as far as i can recall every scene every interaction paid off in the course of the episode at least for that time and mm -hmm. i V very well done, very good production, and and again, the the production value on the whole thing. I mean, they they by the end of the the first episode, I was actually amazed they recreated the Dracula set because uh, I can still remember so it in cool. my mind's eye from seeing that movie, you know, a couple dozen times over the course of my life, and just seeing the mm -hmm. staircase and all the costuming and everybody. It just I was like, well, oh, this is this is a high class kind of thing. This is this is a big deal. And I've again I never heard of uh the main the main actor before playing Dracula. Uh yeah. but uh but Maria was just all over it. She was like, Oh my gosh, no. And and one of the things she said was which kind of which kind of lined up with the character, she says, Yeah, this actor, uh Eugenio Debrez, he he always ends up with like the most beautiful women in his personal life, but he looks like an absolute troll. <laughs> Just like, yeah, I was like, well, yeah, yeah, he's not, yeah. he's not the most attractive man, but he's got, he's got charisma. I mean, if nothing else, you know, that talented. can carry you. Yeah. Super, super talented. talented. And, you know, he comes from an acting family and then he created this whole thing where he, you know, just plays with the Spanish language and that's mm -hmm. kind of witty back in the day with this comedy show. Uh, and that, that, you know, he's, he's a Latin American star. Mm -hmm. you know, but he's not the best looking guy, but he's always, huh? well, he's always been surrounded by, by babes. Good for personality him. can, personality can take you a long way. Now, um, let's get into to some spoilers and then we'll wrap it up. So I do recommend this show. There are some, some, um, some liberties that they took that surprisingly, uh, work, one works and the other one doesn't for me. And that's the character of the translator who existed mm. but did not exist as far as taking over uh translating and rewriting the script so in oh. this derbes has this female character which I, I again i think she's fantastic her arc through throughout this whole thing is like pretty much this is her story you know like this is it's the most interesting arc um mm. where she goes from being the the assistant to the consulate of Mexico in LA to a writer director and you know she come, kind of comes out of her kind of stiff facade and she's has colorful berets and she's you know kind of uh taking over on the set that never happened right. that is a complete fallacy 
uh, in real life. And the tra the guy who who rewrote the, the the Spanish for the cast was a prolific male writer mm. who who was a real life character. And this man, um, you know, he was kind of a for his times, kind of like for lack of a better word, the Mexican uh, Jack Reed. If you remember uh, the movie Reds, where yeah. he was this journalist kind of maverick, and that was this writer. So, do you think they consolidated the characters for efficiency, or do you think there was some more? uh woke agenda type thinking there no it's definitely a little, it's definitely a little bit of woke agenda and but i don't mind it for her character mm -hmm. um here's where i did mind it though it it disrespects the the gentleman who was the director right as a as a complete gambling buffoon and he wasn't mm. he might have been yeah. a gambler but he was a really good director he made that film more watchable than the Lugosi one. Yeah, you know? that was one thing I did I did notice about it is that mm -hmm. every uh English speaking male character was decidedly either uh awkward, stumbling, or as you say, a degenerate gambler, or some greedy producer as uh George Costanza, I should say, Jason Alexander showed us. So there yeah. was there was there, there was some irredeemable quality about all of the men uh coming from America and that, which I suppose no. No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, because okay. The producer that falls in love with Lupita, it's great storyline, and that. Okay, really well, I only saw life. the first. I only saw the first episode, so I don't. Okay, I, don't so, I don't know anything well, you else. You saw in yeah. the first episode, he falls in love with her image with a real tape. Sure. And he cast her, so that's a major through line. In that, in okay. real life, they had a lifelong marriage. And they oh, okay. Had, All right. Was, yeah. So no, he's he's. He's fat. He's really good. Oh, okay. He's really yeah, the way good. the way yeah, the yeah. way the way that first episode kind of frames him is kind of a, a creeper a little bit, or like casting couch kind of attitude. But I wasn't no, sure no, how, he, where that went it, eventually. And, it, and there they talk about that in the in in the episodes where Carmen, the you know the the, the way who do I got to sleep with? He tried. Mm -hmm. She tries to sleep with him. He's like, no, I'm, you know. I'm, oh, okay. First of all, I'm not like that, and I'm I'm in love with Lupita, so. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, I haven't gotten to yeah. that point yet. Okay. No, 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 no. He's, he's, he's real. But, uh, you know, but going back to the legacy of this, of this, of the director, I really felt that that was unfair to where they really basically said, you know, the translator woman, you're directing now. And it was like this official thing. I'm like, you know, yeah, that's not right. That's not I right. Couldn't, no, I, that, that's, I, 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 I can understand consolidating some characters for the sake of time mm -hmm. and telling the story and everything, but mm -hmm. to mischaracterize, someone's contribution to something like that, especially if you're trying to show uh, some reality of the production of this uh, movie, which was mm -hmm. uh, an absolute anomaly at the time is to yeah. do something like this, to have concurrent productions going on day and night and mm -hmm. a big Hollywood thing. And, and especially with the legacy of that film being considered to be a better version of the story than the uh, the big Hollywood version, and almost lost, as they tell us at the beginning, is that you know, save for a couple of copies of the film uh, that were mm -hmm. re recovered, that could have been lost mm -hmm. forever. To then say that the production and creation of this piece of art comes from an absolute degenerate failure of a director who had nothing to do with this, and then hand off the the responsibility to a fictional character, yeah, that I didn't I didn't know that obviously up, up until now, but uh, that's mm -hmm. that's not that's not right. That's well, not and that's right. very Give, much down, you know, Eugenio's uh, kind of like progressive wheelhouse. You know, mm. I, I would that's like, and I think the way they're shaping up his character is that he's he's been a womanizer his whole life, and uh, something's going to happen to where he you know ends up with a grandmother. So they're taking yeah. liberties here and there, you know, yeah. which I don't mind, you know, but again, it's like, why, why diss the director's legacy? Yeah. Um, Li liberties and, is, liberties is fine, but to, mm -hmm. to completely disparage or void out a person's entire contribution and then give it to somebody else as credit. Right. Just, yeah, like, that's, that's not right. But that being said, I do recommend watching the show. It's, it's mm -hmm. you know, it, it's really cool, especially if you guys are into uh, Hollywood history. You can you, then you can just you know uh, uh, check out you know do you know I'll I'll put in a couple of historical uh, links to the Spanish Dracula and its production, and you can see like you know what was true where they took liberties, but you know this entertained us. Uh, uh, yeah, you know we're about to finish this the last 
episode. Um, the uh, the fifth episode we weren't crazy about, but uh, you know it's a, a fairly entertaining show. Scribe, any last thoughts on this? Nope i uh, I enjoyed the first episode. That was entertaining, uh, and if I have the opportunity to see the others, I'll uh, I'll give them a shot. And make sure Marie is there with me to give me all the inside scoop on things and uh, cultural assessment. Well, thank you so much. Remember to subscribe to Scribe Light and uh, let me know what you guys think right now. Have you seen the first episode? First episode is available and free on YouTube. Uh, wherever you're at, keep your slant fuerte. Gracias. That's better. Crack open.